We got CPI, we got PPI, we got sentiment. Seems like inflation is dropping like a rock. Let's summarize the week. Let's summarize everything that happened over the last five days. All the news, headlines, everything related to that. And get prepared for next week because it's earnings season. Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. I'm Micah Stocks from our channel Stock Talk with Micah Stocks where we talk about stocks with Micah Stocks. We have today 1.87k subscribers. We have 35 videos and if you enjoy what you're about to see or in the past, you can subscribe to the channel and of course turn those notifications on. Let's directly dive in to the markets themselves. This is how the major averages ended the week. The Dow ended on a positive sign, plus 1.79. The S&P is up 2.3. NASDAQ is up 3.69. And the Russell is up 2.68. Year to date, all the major averages are up. Leading the charge is NASDAQ, up 35.8% from the beginning of the year. After the NASDAQ, we have the S&P 500, 17.8%. Dow and Russell. Russell before the Dow, 10 and 4%. When we look at the crypto market, you can see middle of the week, the Bitcoin climbing up. Actually, that was the XRP flying up all the way 50%. We're going to talk about that coin in a second. Bitcoin also reacted to, the, to that news. And when we see it, when we look at it year to date, we can see the Bitcoin up 82% and Ether up 61%. When we dive into the different sectors, the consumer discretionary communication and technology lead the charge with almost three for the technology and above 3% for the rest. Energy ending on the green, finally, plus 0.82, um, just uh, shy of consumer staples up 1.12. Diving even deeper, gold miners up 8.52%, home builders up 8.5%, software 5.5%, and the airlines and that the and the red, although Delta Airlines um, provided us with their earnings this week, which actually surprised the market with better results than expected. We're going to talk about that in a few minutes. Diving into the top 17 stocks that we chose in advance, we have the RK Arc Fund had a year and a half, a very very bad year and a half, up almost 15 percent. Shopify and Phase joining the party. SoFi. And on the flip side, we have Apple Red. Could you believe? Microsoft up fractionally and Tesla also. This is our heat map, our weekly heat map for the week. We can see most of the S&P 500 co contributors uh, came red, uh, except Eli Lilly, Merck, and others. This brings us directly to the news. The major news of this week was the CPI, the Consumer Price Index how prices are reflected on us, the consumers. And it came better than expected, depending on who expected it, of course. It came up 0.2%, which means that there is still inflation. It means that prices are still rising, not in all categories, only in some, but they're still rising. When we compare the rate of rising, the rate of price increase year over year, we can see that we are on a downslope going all the way down to, it shows here 3%, actually it's 2.9, 2.95, which means that we are under 3%. Everyone remember that's the Fed target. On the core CPI, we also came better than expected, and that gave the market a green light to keep on with the rally. A day after, on Thursday, we got the PPI, and thanks for Liz Young from SoFi for sharing with us this uh, easy-to-understand chart where the blue line is PPI, final demand, year over year. We can see the huge drop in PPI. This is the producer price index. And the assumption is that if the producer prices goes down, then they will eventually drop the prices for the consumer, and this will also help inflation falling like a rock. On Friday, we got the UMich. University of Michigan consumer sentiment, which shows an uptick. Consumers are starting to feel better with what is going on in the market, which is not a big surprise because if they looked at their 401k in the last few months, it's probably better than it was before. And we got to say a word about Tom Lee. Tom Lee had a very, very difficult 2022. 
When he was bullish, he said inflation is transitory. Things are going to be better. And of course, the market went down. Went down 20% and Tom Lee did not throw in the towel. He was there hitting the drums. And this year, as of, as of the last six or seven months, Tom Lee is very accurate on his predictions from CPI falling like a rock to which sectors are going to outperform. And after a very, very difficult year that he had last year, we should give him a kudos for uh, getting us prepared for the year ahead. This made huge headlines during the week. This is why the XRP went up the way it did. XRP um, gets an approval, or actually it's a approval, well, let's call it an approval for not being a security. If it's not a security, it means that the SEC, can, the SEC Gary Gensler, cannot a uh, charge it by any 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 rule or anything they're not in charge of it and if that's the case then coinbase can go up because the charges of the sec against coinbase are related to the fact that they have jurisdiction over crypto but if it's not a security then they can so it's more of legal matters but if you looked at the different crypto platforms coins miners all of them went up and that was mainly the reason Another reason is the Europe's first Bitcoin spot ETF, which will probably buy Bitcoins, is, is going to be approved in the next few weeks. And everyone is waiting for US to approve their first Bitcoin ETF. That will help the Bitcoin go up right now from a technical perspective for, to around 45000 when or if it happens. St. Louis Fed president announces this week that he is taking a new role being the dean of the Purdue University uh, College of Economics, if I'm not mistaken. So he's leaving by August 14th, and he's stepping into his new role by August 15th. St. Louis Fed President Bullard was one of the most um, vocal Fed presidents that said that rates should be a lot higher than they are today. He was also the one that said that they should start increasing rates a lot earlier, which they didn't. And currently in the Fed, there isn't someone as verbal as him in increasing rate in a dramatic way. If you're a bull, that's good. If you're a bear, you probably already miss Bullard. Bob Iger sat down with David Favor this week to talk about Disney. So the reason for that is because the board of Disney approved another two years for Bob Iger. Two years ago, or about a year and a half ago, Bob Iger was brought into Disney to uh, replace Bob Chapek and to try to save the company, which had finan not financial issues, but the results uh, went down. He thought it would be a walk in the park. He said, you know what, two, if two years isn't enough, then, uh, you know, guess what? He needs an extension. He's 75 years old. He doesn't really need not the money nor the job. He really does it out of passion. He joined Disney in 1974. Disney is going to celebrate this year 100 years. He's almost been there Half of the time of Walt Disney, just something for, for you to know. Why am I mentioning all that? Because during his conversation with David Favor, one of the things that he mentioned was huge corporations and, and things that they're doing with other companies. He didn't say which company and what, but everyone behind the scenes understood that there is something that is happening behind the scene. And Laura Martin from Needham actually was quoted this week saying, this. We do believe that Disney will be purchased during the next three years. Why is that interesting? Well, if you go to go if you Google Disney Vision Pro, <clears throat> you can see that Bob Iger was on the stage Relive. during the presentation of the Vision Pro. This is Bob Iger on the stage of Apple's Vision Pro. Why would he even go on stage with Tim Cook? to talk about the work together between Disney and Apple. Now, of course, I don't have any inside information. I'm just trying to guess behind the scenes, but it does raise a lot of interesting questions around who might purchase Disney. And it's not far-fetched because Apple, more than a decade ago, purchased Pixar, who was led by Steve Jobs back then after he was exited from Apple. You know the rest. Okay. No more uh, thoughts uh, for, the, for the next uh, few years. Amazon. 
had Prime Day, two days of Prime Day. We got results from the first day, which apparently was the best first day sales ever. It's not like Amazon was invented yesterday. This is amazing. 375 million items worldwide. That is phenomenal. Talking about phenomenal, we have just got the first Cybertruck built end-to-end in Giga, Texas. You probably might say, why is that news? We've seen Cybertrucks running around. You're right. But once the product line, in this case, the Cybertruck, works end-to-end, you can start counting down the days till the first delivery. Why is that relevant? Well, you remember Model Y is the most selling car? Excellent. The first Model Y, and thanks for Farzad for sharing that, the first Model Y rolled out of assembly line January 2020. The first Model Y was delivered March 2020. January, January, February, March. Three months. Go back July, August, September. This gets us to the same uh, uh, understanding as for Zad, that if that's the case, we might see first deliveries uh, September 2023. Behind the scenes, we know that there's more than 1 million orders for the Cybertruck, of course, it's going to take years until they're, they're going to be fulfilled. But this is very, very exciting for all you Tesla bulls. And if you're a Tesla bear, there's nothing more I can say at this point. Elon Musk launches his new company, XAI, which would compete with OpenAI, trying to bring uh, stability and uh, less bias to the world of uh, generative AI, or as Elon says, understand the true nature of the universe, whatever that means. Domino partners with Uber, and from the ne- from about a few months from now, you will be able to order your Domino's pizza, pizza directly from Uber's Eats app. This is great for Uber. This is great for Domino's because they get exposure to DTC. Everything is great for both companies, and that's why Domino's and Uber's stock went up this week the way they did. He's still practicing. He is still practicing. This is Mark Zuckerberg, which has had a very interesting week with Meta, with Threads. We're going to talk about Threads in a second. He is still practicing for his fight against Elon. But his fight against Elon can look in a different way. This is pictures that were created by Sir Doge of the Coin. It looks more like married at first sight or something like that, a marriage album. It might end this way or it might end this way. You choose your ending. And if we're talking about Threads, Threads was launched a week ago. Let me see if I have it here. Yeah, a week ago. Yet Linda Yaccarino, Twitter CEO, says, don't leave you hanging by Thread. But Twitter, you really did outdid, outdid yourself. Well, this week was a very, very predominant week, predominant week for Twitter with a lot of Usage, the largest usage since February 2023. And this brings us to the difference, or actually the fight between Threads and Twitter. Threads achieved 100 million signups in five days because it's connected to Instagram. It's very easy to sign up. It's the fastest 100 million signups as we know. But... This is from that's Zuckerberg. That's not the but. Zuckerberg is celebrating the 100 million, but this is the but. CNBC reports on Friday that Meta Threads engagement has dropped off since Red Hot debut. Why? Because it was easy to get on board, but then if you're on board, what do you do with it? And that's the problem right now with Thread. They have got to find a reason for existence except fighting Elon Musk. NASDAQ with a very, very strange development. The QQQs, which is the NASDAQ 100, I'll show you in a second how it looks from that perspective. Just a second. Here we go. Heat map. NASDAQ. NASDAQ 100 index. Here we go. So this is the NASDAQ 100. The ETF that tracks this index is called QQQ. That's one option. There are other versions as well. Every company, every stock has its own weighting in the NASDAQ 100. Because the, because of the rise year to date of Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, Google, and others, their weight got very, very heavy over the NASDAQ. What it means is that other companies lost their weight, their weighting 
inside the ETF might sound like a reasonable thing, but it creates uh, problems from a balancing perspective. And that's why the NASDAQ decided this week that they're going to rebalance again. They were supposed to, to present or actually to post on Friday how the new rebalancing weighting looks like. Well, they didn't. So Bank of America has their own theory of how things are going to happen with the new weight of old weight, but actually no one really knows who's going to gain and who's going to uh, be reduced by percentage. We will need to wait and see. Lena Khan didn't have a good week. Lena Khan, head of the FTC, went after the Microsoft Activision acquisition and lost in court, appealed and lost the appeal again. Microsoft Activision probably is going to happen in the next few, day, few days. The only hurdle standing in their way is the end of the month, which they have to close before. And uh, the UK uh, regulator, which hasn't approved yet, they might close the deal without the UK regulator and just, I don't know what to, what to do with the UK. So that was that. Google updated their terms of service and just notified everyone that they're going to scrape everything and anything that you post online. So if you're afraid that your information would be underneath barred with all the data, well, you're too late. They've already done that. What can I tell you? And this is one of the most interesting and actually anticipated news. NBA is, is reported, reportedly in talks with Apple to have the NBA, probably their, uh, their uh, paid app, in Vision, Pro Vision Pro, meaning that you will be able to sit in your living room or lie on your bed, it doesn't really matter, Front, uh, front court tickets with the goggles on your face. Turn to the right, you have Jack Nicholson. Turn to the right, you have J-Lo, whoever you want on which side you... And you are going to see courtside tickets to the NBA. Is that worth $3,500 for the provision? Personally, I think it is, but others might say it's not. Chipotle, ticker CMG, introduced a new robot that takes avocados... And peels them. Amazing. Technology even in the restaurant chains. And reports that, uh, earnings reports that came out Thursday, Friday. Delta, ticker DAL, uh, beats the top and the bottom line, raises their guidance. United Health, after um, sharing that more elective surgeries are in the pipeline, and that's why their stock went down, beating both top and bottom line and increasing their forecast. City beating top and bottom line, increasing their forecast. Wells Fargo beating top and bottom line, raising their... You, you hear the narrative, right? So same happened to JP, same happened to BlackRock. One thing that is very important from, let's say, history. History says that when major banks that open the earnings season report on a good note, beating, usually it provides the tailwind for the rest of the market. We will see that in the next few days when the more important companies will report. From a calendar perspective, we don't have a lot of interesting macroeconomics um, reports this week. What we do have is earnings. You can look at this. This is the most anticipated earnings release. I, was, I would say there are two most anticipated and the rest. Wednesday after the close. Tesla is report, reporting and Netflix is reporting. From a Tesla perspective, we want to see the margins. We want to hear about Cybertruck and we want to hear about FSD. All the rest, to tell you the truth, I, I'm not sure that it's going to really move unless these three are going to be phenomenal. Netflix, on the other hand, this is Siri. No, Siri. No, no, nothing. Thank you. This is Siri talking. I have no idea why. On Netflix, on the other hand, very interesting. There's a strike, the writer's strike, and now the Actors Guild also joined that strike, which means that most production uh, companies cannot produce anything. Netflix has a lot of already made content, so they're supposed to be less impacted from that. We'll probably hear from Netflix as well. And of course, there are other companies, as you can see, United, IBM, American Airlines, Taiwan Semi, and others, all of them are here. And as usual, we always end up by looking at the S&P. 
This time I'm going to start with a dollar index, the Dixie. The reason why I'm starting with the Dixie is just because the dollar index went down and fell under 100 this week. Now, dollar index down is good for technology companies. Any company that is selling abroad, dollar index down is good. On the other hand, there are companies that are more impacted by that. When we look at the way the dollar index is, the dollar index fell from around 113 or 14 to less than 100, the dollar lost more than 10%. But now the question is, are we going to keep dropping or not? I think that we might be a bit dramatic here in this drop and we should see a correction back. So I don't, I don't know if you're playing with the dollar indexes and something like that. At least from a technical perspective, I think we're going to go up. And when we look at the S&P, Tom Lee said 4,500. We got to 4,500. Tom Lee from Fundstrat, uh, their strategist. So we are now at the S&P 4,500. We are far from our major averages. There might be a correction. That might happen this week after bad results or next week or the week after. I don't know when. But everyone now is looking up at all-time high, which is around 4820, and saying, are we going to reach it this year? More and more analysts are starting to throw in the towel, at least the bearish analysts, saying the, momon the momentum is there. We're probably going to meet all-time high. Currently, from a short-term perspective, we have too many people right now on one side. If everyone was on one side being bearish, now we're starting to get more and more people on one side being bullish. Why am I flagging this? Because we don't want the market to be one-sided. Usually, what creates a market is a tension between bulls and bears. Right now, we're getting more and more people becoming bullish. Everyone's saying, oh, the market's only going to go up and never come down. This never happens. Markets correct themselves, stocks correct themselves. So just be careful. This is, of course, not financial advice. This is only for education and entertainment purposes only. But be careful. Take care. Depending on the stocks you own, depending on the averages. Do I think we have turned a corner and we are no more bearish? We are now bullish unless there will be something dramatic. The answer is yes. The trend is an upward trend. That does not mean we might not see corrections. Some might be very, very strong, but there's still corrections on a huge uptrend. And one last thing to mention here, there's so much cash still outside in money funds and other places that any correction, at least from the numbers and the data that I see and the professionals that I hear from, would probably be a buyable dip. That's what I had to tell you for this week. Weekly summer, we're going to talk about next, uh, next week. We're going to talk about everything that happened this week and probably a lot of stories from Tesla, and Netflix, and others. Till next time, if you haven't smashed that like button, that would be great if you will. Next week, same time, same place. I'm Micah Stocks. Bye-bye.